It is quite big. Very big. <laughs> Good afternoon, morning. Welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm of the four-piece variety Orca Triple XL. We do love a very fast, very large gaming monitor. Just makes things a little bit easier to see when they are almost life-size in front of you. <laughs> That's not quite the case with the 32-inch that we have here from LG Ultra Gear, but uh, yeah, it's it's big. I'm used to 27s, and so a 32 has pretty much been exclusively in a corner for me with like sim racing and stuff but i have reviewed a couple of 32s over my time dells and msi so this is the first one from lg and it's a really good place to start because this features their nano ips with atw technology it's an advanced true wide angle viewing uh, experience that they're going for to just make sure that color reproduction is done as accurately as possible and then the nano ips is basically a quantum dot layer between the backlighting and the IPS to cure the glow. It doesn't get at 100%, but I would say it's 80% better than normal. And so the native contrast of 1000 to 1 is actually quite, quite improved. I couldn't put a number to it, but I'd say it's at least twice better. I still don't think it's quite as good as VA because I'm lucky enough on my setup to have IPS VA and TN set up so that I can see what my content and stuff is going to look like from all the different uh, technologies. But VA in general does still have the edge on contrast. IPS, however, is a lot more responsive and that's a lot better for us as gamers so that you don't get smear, which is quite dreaded on the VA. Anywho. Let's start off with the package contents because it is pretty damn good from Uncle LG over here. So with this, uh, Q, I believe this is the QN850-B variant of the monitor. So the, um, the panel on this is a 2K, 260Hz capable with overclock, 240Hz is the native. So it's got that Samsung Odyssey sort of spec and then it's got the Nano IPS. It's also got a base 600 HDR 600 at least certified. So that's pretty cool. And then base is certified adaptive sync. And then the cables included, you get a proper full fat guaranteed 4K HDMI. You get a USB 3, a full fat one with the high speed for pass through because it does have some added ports for that, which I'll show you in a little bit. You get obviously a display port cable. You get a nice three pin clover plug, a little bit short on this cable. But what's not short is the adapter that's connected over here. It's very, very long. You can see um, I've got it like looping and wrapping around on the table over here. It's very long. It's not going to be able, not going to be a problem to reach anyway. Having a closer look at the monitor itself, the base leg on this is very broad. It is quite a wide boy. You aren't going to be sitting right on top of this. I highly suspect though, however, but just be aware, you are going to need some desk space if you intend to use it. And then uh, the neck along the back of it doesn't have a hole for cable channeling. They went with a clip on type style. So you can, uh, there's three channels built into there. You can be able to say, put through, I would say about four or five cables quite comfortably. After that, it's going to get a little bit crammed in there. A um, little bit of hard palpitations as you pull it off. I'll just say that as well it does feel like it's gonna break but so far i've done it a couple of times during this review and it hasn't so it, it should be fine it should be fine then for the periscope neck the top piece looks like a ball joint but it only has tilt it can't actually go left or right at all you can only tilt it forward or backwards to make sure that you obviously get the best viewing angle and it's okay for that i don't think that you were going to be needing to go left and right too much it's I'd say it would be nice if it had that, but it's not a deal breaker. Looking next to the ball joint is where all of your inputs are. You do have, like I said, that pass through for the USB. You've got then two outputs for that. You've got two HDMI's in, you've got your display port in, and then obviously your power connector next to that. Then for the audio pass through, because this has a DTS pass through, that actually is happening along the bottom left. And if we look at the bottom of the screen, you're gonna be able to see it next to the joystick. So they've put the audio there for it to be easily connectable. And I honestly would have preferred if the USBs were at the bottom 
bottom of the chin as well, just so that you can plug in and out from the monitor like that. It just makes it a lot easier. And this is where we move on to the panel itself and this nano IPS technology and the experience that you're going to derive from it. The contrast ratios have to be at least twice as good as normal, and especially if you use the HDR mode. It is very good on this monitor. A lot of them, I feel like I can get a better color palette out of it, but in this instance, it really makes up for the contrast ratio because what's happening is that little filter that's sitting in between there is allowing less light through. So it's kind of acting like a mini OLED or the same way that Quantum Dot works on the front of the side of it, except because it's a light control, it's enhancing the contrast and not just the color output and reproduction. So it's got, the HDR on this is very good. It does work pretty damn well. Our Costa Rica is a 4K HDR run that we do over there. You can see with the sunset scene, for instance, it goes true black on the bottom side. And that's kind of weird for me with being an IPS guy for so long and having had multiple IPS monitors. They generally do struggle with that. The black areas tend to look a little bit more gray, even sometimes yellowy in gray sort of color because the, they tend to be a bit warmer than normal. This has incredibly good uh, the warmth uh, stabilization if you want to go cooler or warmer there's i think 20 different individual settings for that which is unreal and it's the same with the black light stabilizer we have a look at that osd it's very clean and simple and straightforward it doesn't have an uber amount of functions and features on there except for the color temperature and then for the black light stabilizer there you've got 20 different settings over there <laughs> and then you've got a bunch of other different color palettes like rts and fps and gaming and such and you can do per color change on the on here as well you can also change which what comes up on the quick settings from the from the primary menu you can change what is easily accessible over there Now, because it's an IPS, it still really performs in game. I played a ton of Taki on this and a little bit of Counter-Strike, which we actually did live on stream. So you can go and check that out. We played some Deadlock on here as well. It was pretty fantastic all around. The color reproduction and the speed at which it produces images because it's a true one millisecond response time with that good old 240 Hertz refresh rate on 2K. It is absolutely <laughs> exceptional for that. Obviously, if you're playing a lot of FPS and stuff, it is a little bit difficult to see the whole screen if you're not sitting further back because 32 inch is flipping large. I'm 183 centimeter tall, basically six foot. And look at it like here's my arm this you could say up into there is half of it's basically like three feet across that's like a, almost a meter across width of screen it's very very large that is the one thing that i'll take away from this it's not all that heavy though this is actually lighter than one of the 20 other 27s i reviewed recently because they've kept the weight down on the stand which is a big plus it does have a vase amount at the back as well so you can use this on an arm um, and then the port location is going to help with monitor arm type of mounting. They've also included the obligatory LED light at the back, which you can customize in different colors and set up to your preference at the same time. It's not really going to be something that you look at. It does add a little bit of ambient lighting. If, you're the wall, if you're, a wall was right behind this monitor, you would get a little bit of glow of that light from behind the monitor, but it's not like ostentatious and shouty and going to ruin your gameplay experience. The panel really is the 
big sort of uh, attraction here. I saw a lot of people saying that they felt it was gimmicky in the Nano IPS and it was literally just marketing jargon, but in practice, I couldn't agree with that, especially when using HDR content. It is noticeably better with the black areas because it is physically limiting the light. Um, and I feel like that was a bit of a harsh reaction to it. It's still not cheap. You're gonna set yourself back 15K to get this monitor. I would love this in a 27. I think that would be peak. Um, there's a lot of competition in that segment and that's because I think that's what we generally want as gamers in the market. The 32 is nice. If you were using this for like a racing sim or something to that effect, it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. Uh, for Tarkov, I actually highly recommend it because the black light stabilizer with this control is kind of like having cheats in some of the darker areas. It works exceptionally well for that as well. And being in a out, big outdoor open environments and having to see further away when you've just got more pixels and they're bigger, it really does help. For games like Counter-Strike and like Valo and stuff, I think 27 is still gonna be the preferred size. I don't think we're gonna go over towards 32s just because of the physical size. Sometimes you have to like turn your head to actually be able to see the whole monitor. But is the panel and the technology good? It is exceptional. It's a six spec. I think the price is maybe a little bit premium. It's going into OLED category, which is very competitive um, as well. And I think OLED in general is still going to have better contrast ratios because IPS is just limited as a technology. Even with that backlight limiting, it is still twice as good as normal, but that's still it's still going to be behind OLED and VA as far as contrast ratios go. It's still very good for all purposes. If you're going to be doing design and gaming, etc., and you want super high refresh rate, but you also want higher resolution at the same time, this is a really good crossover point of a monitor. Anywho, this is all I've got for you on the LG 32 GQ A50-B. If you have enjoyed this review, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side.